Hi, I'm Rich Kramer. I'm a professor here in the Molecular Cell Biology Department at UC Berkeley. And this is Ivan Tachitsky, a graduate student and the first author of a new paper coming out in the February 19th issue of Neuron that I thought you'd be interested in hearing about. So why don't you come on into my lab and we'll tell you all about it. Okay, first some introduction. My laboratory is interested in the retina, the layer of neurons in the back of the eye that transduce information about light and convert it into a neural signal that is communicated back to the brain, enabling us to sense the visual world. Unfortunately, there are degenerative diseases where the normal photosensitive cells in the retina, the rods and cones, die off. But the rest of the neurons, the downstream neurons in the retina, remain intact and the circuit continues to function uh, all the way up to retinal ganglion cells uh, still communicating with the brain, although it is slightly remodeled uh, the, the longer degeneration proceeds. Over the years, there's been various technologies that have been developed for artificially stimulating neurons in the retina to either directly or indirectly enable light to generate a signal in these retinal ganglion cells in the hope of restoring some visual perception uh, to people. Um, our approach is a relatively new one and that is to develop and use photochemical molecules that confer light sensitivity right onto the retinal ganglion cells. So we introduced this approach in an earlier paper in Neuron in 2012 where we developed a molecule called AAQ which is a photo switch that works selectively on potassium channels and indeed confers light sensitivity on neurons in the retina. Here in this paper we develop a new photo switch molecule called DNAC which works on different sets of ion channels and which has some improved properties. First of all it responds to light in the middle of the visible spectrum uh, with a sort of peak response in the blue-green uh, part of the spectrum. And secondly, it responds in an appropriate uh, light intensity range, sort of similar to what one would, one would find with ordinary daylight. We use a device called the multi-electrode array to record the electrical activity of the retina. By placing the retina ganglion cell side down on the array, we can record the activity of dozens of ganglion cells simultaneously while stimulating the retina with light. We first recorded retinal activity from blind RD1 mice, an animal model of retinitis pigmentosa, which lose all photoceptors several months after birth. Ganglion cells from RD1 mice are spontaneously active, but their activity was not affected by light since all their photoceptors have been lost. After we treated the retina with DNAC, light caused a rapid and robust increase in firing rate in almost all ganglion cells recorded by the array. So how do we know that DNAC is acting directly on the retinal ganglion cells? So we devised a cocktail of antagonists of neurotransmitter receptors com to completely block synaptic transmission in the retina. And under these conditions, the the ganglion cells are synaptically isolated and we discovered that DNAC not only continues to confer light sensitivity but if anything the light response of the ganglion cells is more intense after blocking all the synapses leading to it. And then we did the same experiment with uh, wild type retina. Ordinarily it would be difficult to dissect out the contribution of the wild type light response from the DNAC mediated light response. But after treatment with this cocktail, we once again can synaptically isolate the ganglion cells. And to our great surprise, we discovered that DNAC fails to confer any light sensitivity. So to repeat this, there's a great difference between the degenerated retina where DNAC confers light sensitivity on ganglion cells and the intact retina where DNAC has no effect. So we sort of accidentally are exploiting the electrophysiological remodeling that seems to be occurring in the retina and we'd like to understand the molecular basis of the degeneration specific action of DNAC. 
Uh, we know that HCN channels are the relevant target for DMAC, but we don't know what's changing about these HCN channels. And understanding what's changing that enables DNAC to work is going to require more molecular analysis. And finally, and most importantly, uh, if we're really going to contemplate even the use of DNAC as a drug, um, this is going to require really thorough and extensive safety testing in a variety of different ways, including in higher mammals. Uh, you know, for this therapeutic potential of the molecule to really be realized.